this will be the first grindhouse purgatory for 2021 and unfortunately it's not going to be a happy one um, December 31st I lost two close friends and two different spectrums of the genre lost two great people uh, to start off with Gary Clark would mostly be remembered for his portrayal of Steel in Day of the Dead, but he was a lot more than that. Uh, Gary was one of those gifted actors that his stage presence could basically steal the scene and put the spotlight on him. Uh, he had told me one time that when he was in an episode of Law & Order as a SWAT team commander that he was basically so overpowering in his scenes that the other actors wanted him cut down to basically nothing, which was what happened. But be that as it may, I had met Gary years ago at the Chiller Convention when they did a Day of the Dead uh, reunion. Uh, for some reason, we bonded with each other. Um, uh, we kept in touch. We were friends. Uh, we ran into each other again down South Jersey at Monster Mania. And we both weren't too happy with the situation down there because this was another uh, situation where a promoter became the star of his own show. Um, we always stayed in touch. When I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, Gary was on hand to give me advice, tell me to watch what I was doing. And, you know, because his buddy Joe Pilato had it and beat it, he was, you know, telling me, you know, maybe you got to do this, maybe you got to do that, whatever. Okay, so I go through with the surgery, and there's a fuck-up, and I get rushed back into the hospital without a cell phone. Well, nobody knew what happened, but by the time I got my phone, three people had reached out to me constantly, and Gary was one of them. Um... We used to talk about a lot of stuff. Uh, when I started writing, Gary became one of my biggest supporters. He loved Gunfighters of the Drunken Master. He saw a movie in this, and he basically wanted me and him to just fuck it all, get somebody to watch the dogs, and we're going to go out and rent a cabin somewhere in the woods and basically sit down and hammer this out to be a script. Well, fortunately, life gets in the way, but when I was on my third volume of Gunfighters of the Drunken Master, I wanted to use his character Steel in it as a heavy. So I called him up and I says, look, I'm working on this thing and I want to stick you in there as Steel, but you're going to get eaten by a bear. And he goes, what do you mean I'm going to get eaten by a bear? I said, trust me, the way I got this thing laid out, you're going to get eaten by a bear, it'll be all right. So I did it, I mailed him a copy and he called me up and he goes, you son of a bitch, you were right, you had me eaten by a bear. So we still wanted to do this stuff. You know, we used to talk about a lot of different things, you know, life and death, because Gary had limes, and we wondered what was after this, whether it was like, you know, when you go into the hospital for an operation, they put you out, do you just fade away, or is there something else? Well, being that I've had experiences with people showing up here after they died, I'm not a psychic, I just have some kind of sensitivity that sort of works. I said, no, I don't, I don't think it's the end at all. Well... Around June, Gary called me up and his voice was slurring and I know he didn't drink and he was apologizing for it and he said, Pete, I don't know what's wrong. It might be the Lyme's disease or something like that. I'm just slurring my words. Well, he went to a neurologist and I got a letter because unbeknownst to me, he couldn't talk anymore that basically he was diagnosed with ALS, a death sentence. I called his house, Carolyn answered the phone and says, Pete, you're never going to be able to hear his voice again. You know, we got to go old school writing back and forth. And um, they set him up with an email account where he could keep in touch. Um, honestly, I knew it was coming. He knew it was coming. He said he wanted to face his last journey with all the courage and dignity he could muster. And again, we basically were in touch every day. I was trying to keep his spirits up. We're base, you know, and unfortunately in doing that, it was sort of killing me inside, too, because it, it's just terrible to watch a close friend die. And, you know, like I said, we kept it up. I had, you know, called up to wish him a Merry Christmas, and um, I sent my last email to him on December 28th, and there was no response. And I just figured the worst that he had re he had told me that he, he was... He was Getting toward the end that, you know, he couldn't, you know, it was bad and um, he just wanted to go. And I guess at that point he couldn't even type out a response. 
So when I woke up New Year's Day, I had found out that uh, he had passed away during that uh, time period. I know he wanted to make Christmas because Carolyn's birthday was the day before Christmas. I know that's what he wanted to make. Um, if you were on Facebook, you will have seen me completely fucking break down, which I'm not going to do now because I'm all cried out. I lost someone who was like an older brother to me. And uh, you can, you know, say whatever, you know, there's a lot of people in this business you meet, you know, going in and out of it and things like that. But in a business full of fucking cutthroats and scumbags, Gary was real. Gary gave a shit about his fans. Gary would spend time with you. Gary would never overcharge you. And if you weren't in the military, Gary wouldn't charge you a damn thing. He was just a decent guy and just loved to network with his fans. And we had, you know, the, the anniversary up at Cinema Wasteland where uh, we all got to go out and break bread together and have a drink and, you know, make merry. And who the hell knew it was going to be, like, you know, the last time I would basically see him alive. So, Gary... I miss you, my brother. You believed in me. I, I loved you. I still love you. I miss you, and I know I'll see you again. So, vaya uh, con Dios, my friend, uh, and thank you. Thank you for being my friend, and thank you for everything you've done for myself, my fans, and your family. Um, sadly, that wasn't the end of uh, my misbegotten new year. Um, Carter Stevens was a director in the golden age of porn. Carter and I grew up in the same town, West Orange, New Jersey. He was eight years older than me, and the town was weirdly divided uh, in half. So he went to school, high school on one high school, Mountain High. I went to high school on the other side, West Orange High. So our paths never crossed. Years later, when I was drinking at Club 44, I believe he was working in that area, uh, doing some photography work before he jumped into the whole X thing. Um... When MySpace was hot, uh, he contacted me on MySpace, and we started talking and became friends. It was an honor to go up to After Hours Cinema and do the audio commentary on uh, his film Wicked School Girls, which was one of my favorite porn movies. Uh, I don't even know if we talked about the damn film. We were talking about everything else. It was like the first time we met in person, and we, were just, we just hit it off. So I got Carter to get up to Cinema Wasteland where... Uh, he met a lot of fans and had a great time. Um, Long Jean Silver was like a sister to him, and when Long Jean was having money problems, I made a deal to get her up to Cinema Wasteland, and Carter contacted me and wanted to know if I could get him in there, and through some maneuvering on my part, I made it happen. Um, we all stayed in touch via Facebook. I know Carter was having health problems, he was trying to get somebody to write his autobiography, but I think the guy bailed out. And he was trying to make one last film. Uh, my partner in my uh, 8mm and film series, uh, Mike Razzo, also had released Carter's films. And, you know, being that Carter lived in the Poconos, we would sometimes meet and grab a bite up in North Jersey uh, with some German place, I think the Black Castle or something like that. But anyway, um, Carter was out... Uh, December 31st with his son when he collapsed. He just collapsed and died on the spot. Um, I had no fucking clue what had happened. For some reason all day I was thinking of Carter and then Gene got a hold of me and told me the horrible fucking news. Um, again, flatlined by this whole thing. Uh, Carter was a good guy. He made some great films. Unfortunately, like all the Golden Agers, everybody was sort of like paid on the down low, so nobody was really collecting Social Security, and he wasn't well off. Uh, Long Jean is doing a fundraiser for him. Uh, if you go on Facebook or, you know, just look up on GoFundMe uh, Memorial for Carter Stevens because he wants a Jewish funeral, and unfortunately, like a lot of people, he died broke, so we're trying to do the best for him. So again... All I can do is say goodbye, my friend. You know, you were, you were a fucking force in the business. You were a decent guy. And it was an honor to work with you and call you my friend. So, again, it's like uh, this is kind of a sad day to start off the year. But in one respect, Gary's out of pain. He's free now. And I know I'll see him again. I know I'll see both of these guys again because I believe there's something after this. So, uh, 
Before I completely fucking lose it, let me wish all my friends and fans here a happy new year, a lot fucking happier than 2020, because uh, we got to beat this thing. We're going into another fucking horrible round of this pandemic, and please mask up, stay safe, and um, we're going to give you a lot this year. It's going to be a whole new year for Grindhouse Purgatory, the magazine, and Grindhouse Purgatory, uh, the YouTube channel, and hopefully for 42nd Street Pete and his fans in general. So again, stay safe.